been a few days, and yeah, we got multiple sources now. Sorry, Kowalski, but Kurtzman is gone, okay? You're not just making shit up. This isn't just rumor mongering. He is gone. It's getting multiple sources now. It's not going to stay quiet very long here. Now, now we seem to have CBS's attention. Let's follow through on a few things here. Now, you know, again, no obligation. I'm just a you know guy in the audience, but uh, my little master plan for saving Star Trek and making and the future viability here. You've already got step one, fire Kurtzman. You need to follow through on that and get rid of everything, everyone else attached to this. Stop, stop trying to figure you're going to salvage Picard. With the current... If they're following the same plan, it ain't going to work. I think the, that screening made it abundantly clear. We are not going to stand for the further bastardization of Star Trek. Enough is enough. Cut it off. The first, you know, that just, now, that just stops the bleeding. Step two, you got to start uh, winning us back. And I mean some very big grand gestures. One thing I'd suggest, canonize Star Trek Continues. It was specifically crafted to fit in with canon and actually bridge canon between the end of the, end of the series and the beginning of the motion picture. And that's only like a few, it's only like maybe a couple of years, time-wise. Because the Enterprise, you know, only went like a year and a half, and the Decker's, you know, comment that he had you know, Kirk hadn't logged a single star in like two and a half years. So really, we're talking less less than three years time between the end of the of the of the five year mission and the motion picture, and they bridge that gap rather nicely. You've already got the animated series serving essentially as the fourth season. This makes the fifth. Slot that in there. Put you know. Whether or not you want to pay, you know, Vic and his crew a gratuity or something from producing the thing, I don't know. You already own it, really, technically, anyway. And Vic would be honored just to have it included, okay? So, yeah, put that on CBS All Access, right next to their other ones. And a little grander gesture. How about greenlighting the fifth season of Enterprise and uh, correcting that little error by the previous administration under Les Moonves? Because there was no reason. Things were picking up. The story was firming up. The fans were coming back around. There was every reason in the world to renew that show for at least a couple more seasons. And it was pure spite that he that he canceled it. Correct that error. Get that back on the air. I'm sure you can work around Bacula's you know, NCIS schedule. Okay. Again, you know, if it's on All Access, it would, it would help All Access because that's something people want to watch. Get that back on the air. Get you know, and get that story back up and going. Director's already got the refit of the NX01 ready to go. He's had he had it in prep before the thing was canceled. So, just a matter of rebuilding sets, you know, which I know, but you already got the design, so that's you know, the job's half done already. Another little thing that might really help is uh, take a page out of Lucasfilm past, because they're not doing any more under Disney, but uh, start, you know, don't just have guidelines for fan films. Let's go a Star Trek fan film award, you know, thing every year. It did wonders for uh, Lucasfilm and the fan and the fan base there, and Disney was, were idiots for canceling it. But you're going to have guidelines? Well, make a, make a, go, a reason for those guidelines. You know, you, you want to qualify for this contest. And actually, it would also be a reason to modify those rules a bit. Where you can have long form, short form, you know? And I think a little Hall of Fame, you know, thing for the first couple of years. To bring in the old ones from the old old days. For the ones who kind of kick in the high gear. Like uh, Continues. Like New Voyages of Phase 2. Uh... Exeter, Star Trek Exeter, you know. Acknowledge the guys who really got this thing going here. And really, foster this, okay? You need the fans. You should realize that by now. You're not going to get this thing going here with just customers. You need fans. You need dedicated, hardcore fans that are going to go out and buy the merchandise. And who are actually going to be interested in what merchandise... Like you need to show this gun interest the fans first. Okay, this is basic 101 nurturing a fan base here. These, I shouldn't be telling you guys, but apparently I do. 
you need fa- they always need fa- this has been a rule of Hollywood ever since they started doing you know movies you need the fans I think it's part of the problem is when lawyers and, and accountants are taking over and oh, I'll just replace them other people no you can't do that okay there's a process you got it's kind of basically you know, think of it more like you know baseball you, know, you got to have a farm league you got to bring them up through the ranks you don't just swap them out with people who have no clue what's going on But yeah, you follow follow those little steps there, you know. To clean out all of you know Kurtzman's, and as far as you know, a little issue that uh, Kent was the fact that the uh, Star Trek brand that were operating out of uh, Secret Hideout. I think that was to keep an eye on Kurtzman because with all the little additions, you know, he was made Grand Poobah of all things Star Trek, and almost immediately they started pulling away his authority. They brought in John, they put John Van Sitters in a more in a bigger position to manage things. They brought in uh, Veronica Hart to manage the brand thing, and they did not answer to Kurtzman. They answered to CBS. That was a that's a big freaking hint right there that they were starting to lose confidence in his sorry ass. And the and the test screenings for Picard. And yes, five weeks you used. To you don't know that much time production, Kowalski. Let me school you on a few things, son. You can generally shoot an entire episode of a show in a week. They've had five weeks. They've got enough to have at least a couple of good episodes ready to go here, at least for test screening purposes. Man, I have finished effects. They could have animatics, you know. But they've got more than enough to get a pretty good sample of what this show is going to be about. So in my mind, no, screw your mind. This is how it works. Take it from someone who's actually worked in the, in this field, okay? They have more than enough footage to give an idea of what this show is all about. And the fact that it's bombed so badly, yeah, he's gone. They bought out his contract. That's how badly he, he screwed up. So, yeah, clear it out. You need to bring in seasoned professionals, actual science fiction writers, specifically people who have written for Star Trek before. Joe Monoski by himself is not going to do it. Kristen Byers, a novelist. It's a different field. Your you know, screenwriter and, and novelist are two different areas, okay? They tried to adapt a Peter David you know, book back in, back in the day. They couldn't quite pull it off, okay? So, there's still a few out there that are not quite retirement age yet, okay? Yeah, Rick Berman, he's enjoying his retirement. Dorothy Fontana, as much as I love her, sorry. <laughs> She's earned a thing. She might, I'd, I'd love to have her back for a script to do, especially if you're going to do a prequel again. Or the, or the you know few more seasons of Enterprise would be perfect for that. But no, you know, not in a staff position. You know, Ron Moore, I think he can be coached back, okay? Before the Orville snatches them up. Come on. David Gerald, I think he's face feisty enough he can probably contribute a few things. And and there's other right others out there. And start soliciting people who have written for science fiction before and written start start television before. And get and get them with both. Beautiful. So but you need this is a specified it, this is a specialty within a specialty okay star trek is not exactly you know an easy show to do anyway a lot of people have you know died on that hill find out the hard way that there's there's very specific demands in producing star trek even beyond doing a science fiction show because you have you know, that is where the adherence to canon really becomes as a writer's excuse you have no reason because true creativity li- thrives on limitations you have to figure out a way around this thing it's lazy to say, I just want to clear the whole thing and do what I want. No, 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 no. You do that on your own time, on your own projects. You're working in this, this sandbox. These are the rules. You deal with them or you get the hell out and get someone, well, get someone else who can. Okay? He's like, I am losing patience with this bunch, okay? And I can't wait for the do- for the documentary Shatner's going to do on this one. <laughs> You thought chaos in the bridge was a cluster strip all day, you know. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Anyway, I'll be working on a fan film retrospective because you know the last one talking about Axanar got me thinking about like this, and the and the video I did about over a year ago about uh, the guidelines. I want to do a little spiffier version of that and also do a little retrospective on fan films in general because it's it's a, it's an alien field to some people. It's like, what? I never heard of anything. Yeah. And it actually goes back quite a ways, you know, back to the original series. And 
if you want to get Tiki Tac, there's probably fan films for Laurel and Hardy going back. The second people started getting their own home movie cameras, you know, the price of you know, making their own movies. But we're going to focus specifically on Star Trek. So, PayPal, Patreon down below, and hopefully something else uh, later today. So.